Kingfisher's wife, Sapphire, is all agog this morning. There was a letter in the mail from an old girlfriend of hers now living in California with her husband, inviting Sapphire and the Kingfish to come out and spend the summer with them. Sapphire is just telling the Kingfish the news. So Judge Gladys Hoff and her husband are inviting us to come out to California for three months and live at their house, eat at their house, give parties for us, and show us all the sights. Ain't that some invitation, George? Yeah, but you think them cheap kids would have a decent city to send us to transportation. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Just think, three months in California. If we like it, we might even live out there. You know, they say out in California, people stay young. Yeah, well, what's the matter with New York? You've been 35 for the past 12 years. <laughs> George, you're impossible. When I think of Gladys Harper out in California with a nice husband, a beautiful home and everything, you know, I could have married that Harold Harper myself. When he lived in New York, he proposed to me before he did Gladys. Mm, he did, huh? Yeah, but then it didn't look like he was ever going to mount to nothing, and Mama told me to wait. To wait till I could marry some man that was smart, shrewd, and ambitious. And then I come along. Yes, and I decided not to wait. <laughs> yeah. But about this invitation, George I wouldn't have to buy no clothes Because I got a few summer things from last year Hey, what are you talking about going? We just got $90 saved up for our vacation We can't get out to California and back on that George Stevens, don't you want a vacation too? Certainly I do, but let me Well, George, you better find some way to raise that fare And I mean every word I'm saying I was never more serious And I'm telling you right now, right to your face That if you don't raise the fare to California I ain't going to talk to you all summer You know that might be the nicest vacation I ever had. <laughs> well, that's the story, Henry, and my wife insists on me raising the fare to California. Well, I understand it's beautiful out there. My society friend, Mr. J. Wadsworth Van Felt, takes his family out to the coast every summer. Mm, that must cost him a pile of money. On the contrary, it don't. You see, Wadsworth has got a dear friend in the trucking business, and him and his family always go out with a load of furniture. Yeah, well, they get there all right, huh? Yes, but of course, they've got their little problems, too. They always have to find a load with a piano in it so the children won't miss their practicing. <laughs> well, the thing I... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes lightning. Oh, excuse me, Brother Kingsley. This telegram come from Mr. Ann there, but here around no place might be reporting. Well, open it up, lady, and read it. I am. It's just uh, Andrew Brown. Say, uh, your raffle ticket number 1578 won first prize in the annual Jersey City Businessmen's Club raffle. Our representative will call on you to arrange the delivery of the prize, a brand new 1948 Plymouth Roadster. It's signed the awards committee. And he won the Plymouth Roadster? No, oh, me the lucky stiff. If only I was the one that won that, me and Sapphire could, uh, could, could, uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, look, Lightning, uh, uh, take that telegram and burn it up and don't say nothing to nobody about it, special Andy. Otherwise, you're going to get in trouble. Now, get on out of here. I uh, yeah, I'll will lay on out. <laughs> Kingfish, if I follow you correct, you was about to sing, California, here I come. Now, look, Henry, old pal, if I can just get that raffle ticket away from Andy, me and my wife can drive out there. Let's see, Andy don't know that he's won the thing yet. Yes, but it ain't going to be easy getting that raffle ticket away from him. After all, he paid his good money for it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Good money. Suppose he paid bad money, Henry. I got angle. I'll convince Andy that he passed a counterfeit bill, a counterfeit dollar bill when he bought the ticket. Kingfish, you was as good as on your way. If you get stuck for luggage, I got a couple of nice suitcases. Uh, leather suitcases? Well, they look like leather, but it's really stimulated alligator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just got to convince Andy that he doesn't pay us a counterfeit bill. Oh, oh, I think I hear his flat feet sloshing down the hall now. Yeah, now I got to let him know in a subtle way that I as a tea man. Oh, come in, Brown. Hi, Kingfish. Hi. Say, uh, what is that card with a big T on it you got stuck in your hat, man? Oh, uh, Andy, I didn't mean for you to see that. I only wear it that when I was alone. <laughs> oh, well, uh... I didn't mean to bust in on you when you had a tea in your hat. I'll make believe I didn't see it if you want me to. No, no, I might as well confess. Andy, I was a tea man, and you, Andrew H. Brown, is wanted by Uncle Sam. Now, just a minute. They can't take me in the Army. I already served three years with a WPA. <laughs> Andy, 
I am with the Treasury Department. Brown, you may now consider yourself under arrest. You was one of the most dangerous counterfeiters in the country. Oh, me? Yeah, that's right. You bought a raffle ticket three months ago, and you paid for it with a counterfeit bill. Why did you do it, Andy? Who is you working with? Let me see the rest of the money you got in your pocket there. Yeah, well, here. Here's a five-dollar bill. That ain't counterfeit, is it? Look at that picture of Lincoln. Mm, let me get my magnifying glass on there. Mm-hmm. Making fives, too, huh? What you mean? Andy, that ain't Lincoln. That's Raymond Massey. <laughs> Well, anyway, Kingfish, I, I didn't make that counterfeit dollar. And besides, I ain't got no more. I only passed one. And the government don't care whether you was a manufacturer, wholesaler, or retailer. They got you. No, me. And before I slip the handcuffs on you, let me give you some advice. You picked a bad time, Andy, to start counterfeiting. Counterfeiting dollars is on the way out because of the high cost of raw materials. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, they have figured it out that it costs a dollar and a quarter to make a counterfeit dollar bill. There ain't no money in money these days. <laughs> Well, this is a mess. Well, I guess I'll get on the telephone and call headquarters. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute here. What can I do to get out of this jam, Kingfish? Couldn't you tell him that I was just an uh, overage uh, juvenile delinquent? Uh, wait a minute. Tell you what. You is my pal, and I want to help you. <laughs> Give me the raffle ticket that you bought with the phony dollar, and I think I can fix things with you so you ain't got to go to jail. Oh, Kingfish, you was a true friend. That's okay, Anna, but don't tell nobody, because... Well, if you find out that I use my influence for a friend... The head of the team, man, Sir Thomas Lipton, will fire me and take away my T-shirt. Uh, you know, Kingfish, I just happen to remember I left that raffle ticket in my gray pinstripe suit that I sent over to the Amsterdam Avenue shelter where the bums go to get old clothes. I always give them my suit. Holy smoke, without that raffle ticket, Andy, I can't do nothing for you. I tell you what, no. I'll think of something. You go on home. Okay, Kingfish, call me when you decide what to do. So long. So long, Andy. Well, hello there, Shorty. How's the barbering business? Oh, hi, the King Chris. Business has been so wonderful. Uh, the money is just rolling. I got, I got more customers than I know what to... Yeah, that is... You got... I, 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 I lose my shirt. <laughs> well, now, look, Shorty. Uh, Andy done won a brand new Plymouth Roadster on a raffle ticket. And uh, he done left a ticket in the pocket of an old suit, and he done sent over to the Amsterdam uh, Avenue shelter. Mm. Now, I can't figure out how to get the thing back. Well, that, that's no problem, Kingfish. Just take Andy down to the shelter and, re and represent him as a deserving man that needs a suit. The day is always glad to help somebody that's down and out. Yeah, that's just what I'll do. Uh, that's just what I'll do. Uh, you, you know, Kingfish, I've, I've been trying raffles for years, and I ain't never won a, a single thing except once. I, I had a feeling, too, that I, I, I was going to get it that day. Yeah, today I stood with a ticket in my hand as the man reached down. He pulled out the number and it was 605. And I looked at the number I had there in my hand and that, 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 that was 605. And I, and everybody ran over and congratulated me and slapped me on the back. I, I, I was, oh, it was really exciting. Oh, well, that, that is sweet, Johnny. What did you get? I, I, I got a completely furnished shave room house. I, I got a brand new eight cylinder motor. It was a 32-foot cabin cruiser, a, a, a stove, a refrigerator, a, 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 four years in the Army. Now, listen, Anna, before we go into the shelter here, uh, you say the suit you give him was a gray pin type suit? Yeah, I'll know the thing as soon as I see it. Okay, now, I'll tell the man that you was just out of jail. Now. Then as soon as we get the suit we was looking for, we'll take the raffle ticket out and then send the suit back. Okay, let's go in. Hey, there's the man coming over to us now, Kingsley. Oh, how do you do, man? My name is Jackson. Uh, can I be of service to you? Oh, uh, yeah, Mr. Jackson, uh, thank you. Allow me to introduce ourselves. I'm George Stevens, and this year is a deserving bum, Andy Brown. How do you do I, uh, I meet many men in your condition, Mr. Brown. Mm, likewise. <laughs> you see, uh, Mr. Jackson, I happen to be a wealthy philanthropist, and, uh, uh while I was out today, uh, walking down the street, I was smoking a big Havana cigar, took a couple of puffs off the thing, and got a little tired of it, and I tossed it in the gutter and it landed on Mr. Brown's head here. You mean to say that he was lying in the gutter? Yeah, but I jumped up as soon as the cigar burned me. <laughs> Uh, General Mrs. Brown here told me a sad story. I decided that he deserved help. Well, Mr. Stevens, although Mr. Brown is entirely welcome here, why didn't you, as a philanthropist, help him yourself? 
Mm, yeah, Kingfish, why didn't you do that? Uh, well, uh, I retired from the racket about five years ago. <laughs> you see, my heart couldn't stand the sad stories, and I ain't been able to philanthrop no more, that's the way it is. <laughs> Mr. Brown, what was the cause of your downfall? Well, uh, I... You see, Mr. Jackson, uh, he was just decommissioned from prison, and he needs a suit. The one I was wearing, you see, I borrowed from Mr. Stevens here, my benefactor. Yeah. You mean to say that you haven't got a suit to your name? No, sir. On the day I was released, the uh, warden gave me $10 and put me out in my underwear. <laughs> well, I, uh, I can't understand a warden releasing a man without a suit. Well, the warden had a lot of confidence in my ability... He thought that before the day was over, I'd be able to steal one, you see. You know, I ought to report that warden to the authorities. Yeah, well, I wouldn't uh, antagonize the jail official, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Brown Hill will no doubt be back in there pretty soon. He'll be able to make it tough on him, you see what I mean? While you were in prison, Mr. Brown, uh, did they work you pretty hard? Oh, yeah, sir. They worked. He was in the jute mill. Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't easy making them jute boxes, neither. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if you'd tell me the nature of your crime, Mr. Brown. Uh, crime? Uh, uh, oh, they accused my friend here of uh, prefabricated murder. You see, he shot uh, he shot an innocent bystander on the street. It wasn't my fault that I shot him, though. I was aiming at a cop. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Brown, the shelter is always happy to help a poor soul in need, regardless of his past. And if you just step over here, I'll let you have a suit. Uh, come on. Oh, uh, what are you showing this year in gray pinstripes, Mr. Jackson? Uh, well, I'm afraid that Mr. Brown will have to take them as they come. Now, here's a blue serge suit. Uh, try the pants on, Mr. Brown. If they fit, you'll have to take it. Yeah. The seat of these blue serge pants look like they've been Simonized. <laughs> well, I am sure that the suit will fit you perfectly. You can't possibly find anything wrong with that outfit. Mm, uh, well, so much for the business suit. Now, what can you show him in a sporty gray ensemble to wear at the pool room? Uh, but you see, Mr. Stephen... Oh, uh, pardon me, man. Somebody else just came in. Yeah, sir. Hey, Kingfish. There's the pinstripe suit right there that I sent over here, see it? Yeah, come on, quick. Let's get the ticket out of the park. Yeah. Yeah, here. Here's the ticket. Here it is. Oh, good. Give it to me. Lucky for you, we found it, Andy. Now I better rush over to the tea department and see what I can do about killing the counterfeit charges against you. So long, Andy, and keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Well, now that I got the raffle ticket from Andy, I can just see me and Sapphire driving across the country to California in our new Plymouth Roadster. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, hello. This is Mr. Wilson of the Jersey City Raffle Committee. I'd like to speak to Mr. Andrew H. Brown. Uh, uh, uh speaking. Uh, Mr. Brown, as you know from our telegram, you won the raffle. And we would like to make the presentation this Saturday night at our regular meeting at Ajax Hall. Naturally, we want to get as much publicity out of the event as possible. So will you be there in person? Uh, uh yes, yeah, sir, Miss Wilson. I'll be there. Thanks for calling. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Brown. Oh, me. There's going to be some publicity on this thing. i got to find some way to keep Andy from finding out what I was doing. Well, hiya there, Stonewall. Can I see you a minute? Yeah, it's, uh, come in, King Fish. No, I, I feel kind of blue today. Just had a fight with my best friend. And all over the question of ethics. Ethics, sir? What happened? Well, you see, that this fella come to me and say he thought the girl he was engaged to was interested in another fella, see? And he wanted me to help him get the goods on her. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah, he wanted to tap her telephone wise and listen to her phone conversation. But as a lawyer, I told him that that was underhanded and contrary to the concept of fair play. Yeah. But without telling me, he went right ahead and done it anyway. And he heard some very mushy conversation. <laughs> I see what you mean there. And uh, you two split up because he disregarded your advice. No, he recognized my voice. <laughs> come to see you about uh, Andy had the winning ticket on a 1948 Plymouth Roadster uh, in a raffle. Huh. Now, I had already got the ticket from him, but now I done run into a stonewall. Stonewall? <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, what's the trouble? 
Uh, well, uh, uh, they was going to ward the car at a meeting in Jersey City with a lot of publicity, and I read Andy, going to find out about it, and going to ruin the whole thing for me. Well, the thing to do is get Andy out of town till you get the car for yourself. That way he'll never be any wiser. Get Andy out of town, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, if I was you, Kingfish, I'd send him on a boat trip to some place like Cuba, you know. That way he couldn't change his mind and come back unexpectedly. Cornwall, you got a great idea there. Mm-hmm. Sapphire and me is practically on our way to California. California? You know, I had a client once who was in a lot of, a lot of prisons out there in California. Yeah. yeah. He finally went in for life, but he worked out a perfect plan to escape. Hmm. Yeah, you see, he knew that Alcatraz was entirely surrounded by water. Yeah. He, he said to himself, now... If you just get to the top of the wall and dive off, everything will be all right. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, man. Well, so he, he waited. He waited for a dark night, see, when most of the guards was at supper. He broke out of his cell, snapped up the wall, and dove to 60 feet. Ah. Halfway down, he realized his mistake. Uh, what was that? He forgot he'd been transferred to San Quentin. Oh! <laughs> well, now I've got to get in there on that boat to Cuba. I'll tell them that they just discovered oil down there. Oh, yeah, he come now. I'll get on the phone here. Hi, Kingfish. Uh, excuse me, brother. And I uh, just talking long distance on the phone here to Cuba. Oh. Uh, what was that you were saying there, Signor Corona? Uh, yeah, well, I'll keep the whole thing quiet. We don't want to have no international reconcussion. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you later, Signor. Say hello to Signor Rita. All the little cigarettes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And a happy Babalu and a happy banana to you. Goodbye. <laughs> Kingfish, uh, what you doing uh, talking long distance to Cuba? Well, the thing is supposed to be confidential, Andy, but I guess I can tell you. They have discovered oil in Cuba. Cuba, huh? Oh, yeah, squirting out all over the ground, all over the town. <laughs> yeah, just like them big geezers in Yellowstone Park. They just find it. <laughs> Why, in one place, the stuff overflowed and dumped billions of gallons of oil into the Gulf Stream. Oil in the Gulf Stream, huh? Oh, yeah, last week... The Queen Mary tried to dock at Havana, hit the Gulf Stream, and skidded halfway to Brazil. Oh. oh, yeah, well, I guess the people in Cuba is making a fortune, huh? Oh, yeah, and uh, if it wasn't my job as a team hand with the government, I'd be right down in Havana myself. Well, you know something? If it didn't take a lot of money to drill for oil, I'd go down there, too. But you need too much expensive equipment. Oh, not in Cuba, and uh, the oil is too close to the surface. Well, I look at the way it was discovered down there by accident. Yeah, how's that? Uh, doing a baseball game down there, a fella slid for a beer with his spiked shoes on and brung in three gushes between second and third. <laughs> it was the first time in history that the game was called on account of oil. <laughs> well, tell me, how much money you think I could make in oil down there? Well, in the oil business, Andy, you make a lot of clubs. What is clubs, Kingfish? Well, you know, when you pour his oil out of a jug... How it goes, glub, 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 glub. Yeah? Well, at the current rate of exchange, five of them gloves is worth $40 in American money. You mean if somebody gets a job down there, he gets paid off in oil? Oh, yeah. The average workman gets six gloves a day with a glove and a half overtime. Yeah. Or when they mix the payroll out in Cuba, the noise is deafening down there. Well, tell me this. Is there any good-looking gals down there? Oh, plenty of good-looking gals, Anna. See one on the street, you just say, Tico, Tico to you, mademoiselle. Uh, she'll tico right back. And the next thing, you two will be in some swanker restaurant splitting a cucaracha. Well, do they dance down there? Oh, yeah, yes. You're just in time for the annual uh, petroleum festival, the Oil de Gras. They have that down there. Well, listen, Kingfish, I'd like to go down there, but my money is tied up. I can't afford to take that trip. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Andy. I've got $90 here that me and Sapphire have been saving for a vacation. Yeah. I'll give you this for your round-trip ticket to Cuba. And if you discover the oil, we'll split 50-50. Well, that's fair enough. That sounds like a fair proposition. I'll go. Now, don't blab it around. Now, look, Andy. There's a boat that's leaving tonight. I'll go down to the pier now and get your ticket. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, come in, Amos. I'm just leaving. Well, I'll see you later, King T. Yeah, come on in, Amos. Come in. Uh, what's new, Andy? Well, I'm making a trip to a secret place, and all I can tell you is that it's Cuba. <laughs> What is he talking about? 
Amos, I'm going to get me a cute looking cucaracha with spiked shoes and spit an old geezer at the oil of you know? <laughs> Is you really going down there? In the... Oh, sure. Of course, I got to learn the Cuban language. I know two words already glove, glove. What does that mean? Forty dollars in American money. <laughs> Tell me one thing, Andy. Where'd you get the money for this trip, anyway? Well, Amos the Kingfish is paying my fare. He done give me ninety dollars. Well, then it's all right for you to go. This is the first time I ever heard of that Kingfish doing anything like that. Yeah. Well, in case I don't see you again, Amos, wish me a bum voyage. And you'll hear from me when I get down there. I'll drop you, Mademoiselle. Yeah, <laughs> And now, fellow members of the Jersey City Businessmen's Club, on behalf of the award committee, I'd like to present to you the holder of the winning ticket in our recent raffle, Mr. Andrew J. Brown. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's me, all right, Andrew Brown. Uh, that's me. Uh, yes, I sure was, Andrew Brown. And now, Mr. Brown, it is my extreme pleasure to present you with the first prize in our raffle, a new 1948 Plymouth Roaster. Big enough to roast a 25-pound turkey. Oh! 